All right, welcome to the uh, penultimate session of the uh, DEF CON 31 Misinformation Village. It is my extreme pleasure to welcome Michael Lee, who's going to talk to us about pandemic, profiteers, COVID 19 disinformation. Take it away. Hello. Um, so, my name is Michael Lee. I am an investigative journalist and also the Director of Information Security at The Intercept. In late 2012, uh, well, while I was working at EFF as a technologist, I got a anonymous encrypted email. Um, it's not supposed to have my face here, but that's the corner, but that's okay. Um, I got an anonymous encrypted email asking me to keep, if I could teach some journalists how to use uh, PGP encryption. And so I did, and it was, uh, you know, a few months later after I was working with, you know, these journalists doing encryption and talking to this anonymous person for a while that I realized it was Edward Snowden and um, that he was in the middle of leaking the NSA documents. And so I've been doing uh, investigative journalism and specifically based on hacked and leaked data sets ever since then. Um, I spent years working on the Snowden archive, but then I, uh, uh, have also worked on many, many, many other data sets, data sets since then. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I've also written a book now uh, about it that um, I'm going to talk about briefly. And also, this talk has a lot of slides, so I'm going to uh, move through them quickly and you can ask questions at the end. So, this talk is basically a talk version of chapter 13 of my book. Um, and um, pandemic profiteers and COVID-19 disinformation. Uh, but briefly, this is what the rest of the book is about. Um, so I started with talking about things like digital security, source protection, ethics, uh, document redaction, um, and also where you can download public data sets. And you also download public data sets and work through them through all the exercises throughout the book. Uh, I then move on to a deep dive in you know, using the command line interface and um, uh, a lot of useful programs to use, uh, and then also how to make data sets searchable, uh, how to work with email dumps in uh, a variety of different formats. And this is also all, you know, with zero uh, uh, experience required. You, like, like, you just pick up the book, and as long as you have an internet connection and a computer, you can follow along. Um, I go into Python and spend a lot of time working with structured data with a, a special focus on CSV files and JSON files and SQL databases. And you'll see in, in, in this talk there's a lot of CSV and JSON. Um, and then finally, uh, I have a few case studies, um, including the one that you're about to learn about. And also, I'm releasing the book under a Creative Commons license uh, in order to remove any sort of barriers to access because everyone should have this information and this knowledge. And uh, the book is uh, there's an early print of it at the new search press table, except it was just uh, the old early print is already sold out. Uh, but you can pre-order it if you get it from no search, it comes out in November. If you get it from Amazon or anywhere else, it comes out in, in January. Um, and yeah, there will, once it's released, there will be a VM version on the website. Okay, so in September 2021, I was contacted by an anonymous source. And they just told me very little. They just said that they were dropping some docs on Cadence Health, the horse space peddlers, and that they were hilariously easy to hack. And at that time, I had no idea what Cadence Health was or who anyone else involved in this story was. I just had these two files that uh, were compressed and together about 100 megabits. And a few weeks later, I published my story. Um, I had found out that an anti-vax group called America's Frontline Doctors was raking in millions of dollars convincing people that vaccines are harmful, and it was selling them uh, fake COVID medicine instead. Uh, my reporting ultimately led to a congressional investigation into America's Frontline Doctors and the telemedicine companies that worked with them. Um, and uh, I'm going to show a quick video. This is Dr. Simone Gold, who's the founder of America's Frontline Doctors, and here's what Here's what she had to say about the report. About a month ago, there was an article printed in a newspaper I had never heard of called The Intercept. I discovered that The Intercept is a rag far left of the New York Times. 
They print an article alleging that the telemedicine company to which America's frontline doctors referred people, a third party telemedicine company, had had patient data breaches, that it had been hacked. This got the telemedicine company, of course, very nervous. They thought they had good firewalls up. They spent about $200,000 to prove that there was no actual hack. It was all made up. It was all a lie. But it was the basis for Congressman Clyburn's investigation into me. And I thought to myself, that sounds very familiar, a fake story in a rag paper. So get ready for part two. <laughs> now, what does America's Frontline Doctors do? We are really a civil rights organization. We are the real ACLU. Okay, so let me back up and start from the beginning and explain what America's Frontline Doctors is. Uh, this group started with a press conference, uh, or not with a press conference, with a conference call between members of Trump's 2020 re-election campaign and the conservative activist group called CMP Action. Um, so what they wanted to do was try to find some extremely pro-Trump doctors that would go on TV and promote Trump's policies, and specifically they wanted to find doctors that would go and say, like, yes, it's good to reopen the economy, we shouldn't have COVID lockdowns, and we shouldn't do things like wear masks. And so Simone Gold was the extremely pro-Trump doctor that uh, they were looking for. Uh, when America's Frontline Doctors started, it started with this press conference in front of the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C., where uh, Simone Gold and several other doctors, all wearing white lab coats, um, uh, uh, were, were basically telling a lot of lies about COVID-19. They claimed that a cocktail of hydroxychloroquine, uh, azithromycin, and zinc were a cure for COVID, and it's not and that Big Pharma suppressing it. The press conference was live-streamed on Breitbart. It got uh, millions and millions of views. Trump shared the video before the video was quickly taken down for violating Twitter's um, uh, misinformation policy. And so Simone Gold started America's Frontline Doctors uh, by creating a nonprofit called the Free Speech Foundation. And according to IRS documents, it was started with a $1 million budget and fiscal sponsorship from the Tea Party Patriots. So that's where it comes from. And then, and yeah, also one of the doctors that's uh, uh, an American frontline doctor is Stella Emanuel. She's famous for claiming things like uh, the uterine disorder, endometriosis is caused by women dreaming of sex with demons and witches, or that alien DNA is currently being used in medicine. And so briefly, here is a clip of Trump talking about America's frontline doctors at this press conference and also about Stella Emanuel specifically. Uh, last week, you said Go ahead. Last week, well, real quick, last okay. week you said Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. President Donald Trump abruptly ended his coronavirus briefing at the White House on Tuesday after once again sharing his support for the unproven drug hydroxychloroquine. Many doctors think it's extremely good and defending his decision to retweet a viral video that was removed from Twitter because it violated the social media site's policy on coronavirus misinformation. There was a group of doctors yesterday, a large group, that were put on the Internet, and for some reason the Internet wanted to take them down. I don't know why. I think they're very respected doctors. Trump also said he was very impressed with one of the doctors. The woman that you said was a great doctor in that video that you retweeted last night said that masks don't work and there is a cure for COVID-19, both of which health experts say is not true. She's also made videos saying that doctors make medicine using DNA from aliens and that they're trying to create a vaccine to make you immune from becoming religious. Well, maybe it's the so, same, maybe it's not, but I, I, can't, I can tell you this. That. She was on air along with many other doctors. They were big fans of hydroxychloroquine. And I thought she was very impressive in the sense that from where she came, I don't know which country she comes from, but she said that she's had tremendous success with hundreds of different patients. And I thought her voice was an important voice, but I know nothing about her. Uh, yeah, so Simone Gold is also um, not just a black doctor, but a January 6th insurrectionist. She stormed the Capitol, uh, trying to keep Trump in power after he lost the election. Oh. And she served two months in prison and uh, was fined $9,500. Mm -hmm. 
and all of them. Also, John Strand, who um, is American Frontline Doctor's creative director, um, also stormed the Capitol with Simone Gold. They both got charged uh, together with the same things, but um, uh, Simone Gold did a plea deal where she pled guilty to trespassing and uh, got off on everything else. And John Strand pled not guilty and went to trial and was found guilty of all counts and was sentenced to 32 months in prison uh, and a $10,000 fine. Um, and he's serving it right now in Miami. Okay, so this is basically about all of the stuff that American Frontline Doctors did, uh, you know, once they started selling uh, snake oil during the pandemic. So how did this whole massive scam work? So first, American Frontline doctor, Doctors uh, has a very large following in a lot of different social media platforms, um, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, uh, and uh, they use it, and also they have a, a mailing list with lots of subscribers. And they use this to constantly lie about vaccine safety, convincing supporters that the COVID vaccine is deadly, and that only they have the cure. And I took these screenshots several months ago, and the one from Twitter says that she has 423,000 followers, but I just looked at her X account now, and it has 748,000. So, so this is just getting more popular over time. Um, I also discovered that American Frontline Doctors places ads like this in evangelical Christian newsletters. And so this one says, have you been exposed to COVID by someone who was recently vaxxed? Contact an American Frontline doctor, doctors for a phone consultation with an MD. They can prescribe to you the COVID-19 medication you need to fight this virus. So when they're advertising in private like this, they get a lot bolder with their lies, in this case, claiming that the vaccine causes COVID. So once somebody decides that they don't trust vaccines and that they really need hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin, here's how the whole scam works. First, they would go to the American Frontline Doctors website and click the Get Medication button. This will lead them to a page explaining that they need to have a telehealth consultation that costs ninety dollars. So they click Contact a Physician. This will bring them to a whole different website called SpeakWithAnMD.com, and then they would click the button uh, to book a consultation, which would bring them to another website called Cadence Health. And in this one, they would create an account and put in a lot of their personal information. And then they would fill out a form to book a COVID-19 um, consultation. And the uh, form for the consultation, the options on it changed over time. I, like, while I was recording on this, I kept trying to book one and seeing it. But it always asks, like, what drugs do you want? And it's a focus of hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin. And then finally, the last step is you just put in your credit card number, you get charged $90. And then a few days later, you receive a phone call uh, from someone who will write you a prescription, and then they send that prescription to a pharmacy that is sketchy enough to fulfill it. So an ABC News reporter uh, documented this whole process. So here's another video of CSAM. The clamor to get ivermectin is so great that typical supplies are hard to find. And people have been clearing shelves at animal feed stores, buying versions of the drug meant for livestock. Driving a steep increase in demand while also sending people to the hospital. The FDA had to publish this warning, telling Americans that you are not a horse or a cow, and that these animal-grade medications could be toxic. I'm interested in ivermectin. Okay. Which brings us to how easy it was to get the drug on the internet. After filling out an online application, I paid a $90 fee for the physician consultation. The very next day, a caller rang from Alabama. Are you allergic to any medication? Um, I'm not allergic to any medication, no. I don't have any medical knowledge as far as the medicine or even about COVID. A couple days later, someone called from a pharmacy in New York State offering me 28 pills and next day delivery for $240. I will be sending a payment link on your cell phone number. Okay. You just click on that link and you can put in your card information and press pay. I never once talked with a physician or nurse practitioner. The drugs arrived by FedEx in two days. A clock. So time is reported on them, which was also cited in uh, the congressional investigation this group 
was very interesting. The time journal at Severa Bergen Ride read thousands of messages from a American Frontline Doctors like patient telegram telegram group. And she found that many people reported getting charged the ninety dollars for consultations, but then never actually got a call, and they just lost their money. And then um, other people were got the call and were charged up to seven hundred dollars for ivermectin. And and also the quite obviously they don't accept insurance. So I used historical who is data and corporate records to figure out. Um, how all of these companies involved were connected. And this has changed a whole lot uh, since I was reporting, but this is how it worked at the time. America's Frontline Doctors directed patients to speak with an MD doctor to schedule their uh, uh, phone consultations. Then speak with an MD used Cadence Health as their technology partner to actually collect the patient data and to schedule appointments. And then America's Frontline Doctors has its network of physicians, or physicians, and the physicians then call the patients and fill and write prescriptions, and then they send the uh, prescriptions to RAV2 Pharmacy. So Cadence Health was hacked, and that has all of the patient data. RAV2 Pharmacy was hacked, and that has all of the prescription data. So that's America's Frontline Doctors. And so now let's take a look at the data, starting with a special that part of the state. So this is a compressed file, 33 megabytes. After extracting it, it took up 493 megabytes of space, and it was just uh, 281,000 small files all in the same folder. And the file names are all numbers. And the files look kind of like this. Uh, I opened some of them. This is what they look like. They're all JSON files. This example is for one of them from a patient named Jeremy Parker uh, from Sparks, Nevada. And I didn't redact his name, but I redacted other stuff, and I'll, I'll tell you why later on. Uh, and this file, uh, the user ID is 221735, and that was the file. So basically, it was 281,000 different patient records like this. And in this case, it includes consultation notes that have the date of the consultation and the notes. And these notes say, patient has positive exposure, no symptoms, wants hydroxychloroquine and symptoms. So the other 281,000 patient records had similar information. My source told me that they created an account on the Kid itself website, and then they watched what HTTP requests their browser were making, and I think using the tool like personally. And they noticed that one of the requests was uh, uh, returning their own patient record with the information they filled out, and it had their user ID in the URL. So they tried a different user ID, and it returned a different patient record. And so they just wrote a script to try 281,000 other URLs, and that's what this data is. And then I realized that having all of this patient data, knowing that they charge $90 per consultation and having the like consultation notes, I could calculate how much money they were actually bringing in uh, with this. So let's look at the other one. Of course, they're going to find out the part of CST. So this one was 77 megabytes, and when I extract it, it's 691 megabytes of space. And this was just um, mostly a bunch of JSON files, CSV files, and RAV2 screenshot.png. And so the JSON files are from Kate itself, the CSV files are from RAV2. Um, and so the most interesting files here are uh, Kate all, all patients all.json, which is a 405 megabyte JSON file. And then there's wrap to rxdata.csv, 150 megabyte spreadsheet. Um, so this is the screenshot file that I found. So this is a screenshot of wrap to super admin interface. And my source told me that when they were looking into wrap to, they found a secret URL to get to this interface. And they didn't tell me how they found that, but they said that as long as you were logged into a wrap to account, any account that anyone could create, then you could have access to this. So there was basically no access control. Um, so you go to RAV2, you make an account, you go to this URL, and then the uh, columns on the left, uh, you click on those, and then on the right, all the data populates. So like it says Rx data on the left, and so on the right is um, that basically like all of the data about the uh, descriptions. And uh, my source said that they basically scraped all of the data from this 
in your face and say that you can see So this is what wrap to rxdata.cfc looks like. Um, so this was straight from the wrap to super admin interface. This is a huge file, has 340,000 rows of data, and each row represents one prescription that wrap to build. And as you can see, many of the prescriptions are for hydroxychloroquine, as that's from Mosin, zinc, and ivermectin. Okay, and so I'm gonna just briefly go over what the other data was. This is state itself, all patients, all that JSON. Uh, this is just a snippet from it because it's an enormous JSON file. And this is basically a giant JSON array with uh, 281,000 patient records that have a lot of overlap of the data in the individual patient records, except a little bit of it's different. This doesn't include consultation notes, um, but it does include other stuff like password caches. Um, yeah, and it also includes the uh, created at, I believe, uh, which is the timestamp that the account was created, which is uh, looks like that useful. Um, and so here's another one, Cadence Health Partners at Jason. This lists the 17 partner companies that work with Cadence Health. And so this one that's being shown is the one for American Frontline Doctors. It has an ID of three. This includes like payment processor uh, secrets. Um, and then like, the pricing. So with uh, consultation, it's ninety dollars. Follow-up visit, it's fifty nine ninety nine. And then if you go back to this patient record, um, partner, comma three comma. I, it took me a bit to realize that this is just a comma separated list of partner IDs with like nothing at the beginning and nothing at the end. I don't know why they didn't make it a list, but um, this means that this is that this patient was referred by American Frontline Doctors. So there was a lot of data here, and I need to transform it so that I can make more sense of it. I had 281,000 patients, uh, information about them in individual JSON files and also in one huge file. But JSON like this is kind of hard to work with, and so what I wanted is to convert this into just a single spreadsheet of America's Frontline Doctors patients and also filter out any patients that were other patients that weren't America's Frontline Doctors. So here's the script that I used to convert the enormous JSON file and also the 281,000 tiny JSON files into a single spreadsheet. Uh, you can find the script um, in my book's uh, Git repo on GitHub. Um, I'm including code for various scripts in these slides. I'm not going to spend very much time on it, but I just want to show how very simple the scripts are and how anybody here that spends a little bit of time learning a little pro uh, Python could, or any programming language, could write similar scripts. So this script basically loads cadence, all patients, all that JSON, and then it extracts all of the um, created at timestamps from it, and then it creates uh, a patient rows list. It, and then it um, loops through every file in the HIPAA special folder. Uh, so it loops through all of those individual patient records. It loads the record. It checks to see if this patient is an American frontline doctor's patient. Um, it counts how many consultations they have, and if they have more than zero consultations, which means that a lot of them have zero consultations, which I assume meant they um, created an account that didn't go through with paying the ninety dollars. Um, so, if anyone who actually paid the ninety dollars, it adds them to this list, and then it just uh, starts a new spreadsheet and saves all the data to the spreadsheet. And so then I ended up with this spreadsheet. Um, which has 72,000 rows of data. And this is so much easier to work. And so now I just actually have, like, here is all of the Americans from my doctor's patients. Um, and so the, 70, and the reason why I have 72,000 is because these were the ones that both were referred by Americans from my doctors and had at least one consultation. Um, and then based on the created at timestamp, I like sorted it by this, and I saw that this basically covers two months of data. So I just have two months of patient data. There were 70,000 patients. So since I knew that they charged ninety dollars for consultations, I calculated that they charged patients an estimated six point seven million dollars just for consultations, not including the actual prescription drugs, during a two-month period. And so on average, that's taking in a hundred thousand dollars a day. Uh, and I don't, so I know that they started selling hydroxychloroquine like this in January 2021, but um, I don't have any data between January and July 2021. But if they were making the same amount of revenue during that time, yeah, they would have brought in an additional $18 billion. But I don't have the data, so I don't know the actual number. 
So that was the first look at the picture data. Then I wanted to look at the um, that list of partners. Here's a script that uh, converts the JSON file as up partners just into a spreadsheet that's easier to read. And this uh, code is also on GitHub. And so basically, this uh, just like loads cadence all partners.json and it, um, loops, it yeah, basically loops through all partners and it grabs key information that I care about. And it also counts how many patients each partner has and then saves us uh, the spreadsheet. So here's the spreadsheet that this one created. 90% of the patients in the cadence all uh, database come from American Express frontline doctors, so 255,000 of them. Um, but of those, only 72,000 seem to have paid the $90. Uh, and the rest of the partners, they're all like quack companies. Um, so Dr. Stella Emanuel, uh, Dr. Zelenko made the Zelenko protocol, which was basically the thing on the far right that kind of popularized hydroxychloroquine as a cure for COVID. Uh, Jerome Corsi is uh, the owner of Encore Telemedicine, which is the parent company of Stephen Kennedy. He's also a former InfoWars host and was really big in promoting uh, the Obama birtherism racist conspiracy thing. So uh, that's Cadence patient records. And so um, the next the other part of the data set is their aptitude description. Here is a script that takes that huge spreadsheet of uh, prescription data, and what I wanted to know was, for each drug, uh, how many prescriptions were filled and how much money they have. Which, and the nice thing about that spreadsheet is about the cost of each uh, prescription. So this basically just creates a drugs dictionary that's empty, opens the CSV, loops through all the rows, and then just like increments prescription count and total cost for each prescription based on the name of the drug, and then it saves that into a new spreadsheet. Um, and this is what we get. So uh, this is sorted by total cost um, descending. So uh, ivermectin is three milligram tablet. Uh, they filled 36,000 of those prescriptions and brought in $4.6 million from just that drug. But if you look at this, uh, down at the bottom, there's another ivermectin. And then there's um, uh, like multiple hydroxychloroquines. And uh, so I realized this data could be cleaned up some. Really what I wanted to know is just like overall how much ivermectin, overall how much hydroxychloroquine. So I basically wrote another script that just calculated this and broke it into categories. It just checks for um, how much ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, and cetermosin, zinc, and vitamin C. And these are all of the categories that America's Frontline Doctors, or these are all the drugs that America's Frontline Doctors recommends um, uh, to treat COVID. And then there's just another category for everything else. And uh, this is what I found. So 87% of all the prescriptions sold by Rapid were for fake COVID medicine. And uh, this was over a nine month period. Um, the uh, the, the, the dates don't quite match up. The, call, the patient records is over a two month period. The prescription records is over a nine month period. Um, but in this nine months, patients paid $8.6 million for these drugs. And ivermectin was definitely the most lucrative. Over half of the revenue came from selling ivermectin. So I also had home addresses in the patient data. And home addresses are just addresses are. Um, location data, so I decided to visualize that to see where these people are. Um, and so, as you can see, this includes a uh, city and state of each patient. So um, here's some code where I used an API uh, called Geocode API, but there's plenty of other Geocode API services that you can use uh, in order to basically give it the names of city, city states and get GPS coordinates back. And so this just loads the patients, loops through every patient and makes a list of cities and now has a list of cities and how many patients come from each city. It loops through each city and then makes an API request to look up the uh, GPS coordinates. There's an error handling code um, because it was, there's thousands of cities and sometimes they get requests to fill. And then, uh, you know, once it succeeds, 
it stores the GPS coordinates of each city, and then at the end, it just writes a CSV that looks like this, where it says how many people in each city, and then the city's latitude and longitude. And uh, look at that, Las Vegas is number two. We're in the top three right now. Um, and so this is how, so these are just people who paid the $90 for the tele consultation by city. So I visualized it on a map, and um, this map actually embedded in the story on the website. You could actually like scroll around and zoom in on various places. The bigger the dot, the more people. Um, in order to uh, not dox anybody, I just cut out any cities with uh, less than 10 patients in them. So there would be like a ton more dots, and it would just be like one dot. You might be able to tell, oh, I know the Anthovax guy in my town. Um, uh, and any of these dots are like the center of the city, it's not actually the house or anything. So finally, I also have birth dates as part of the patient records. So I decided to figure out how old people were. Age is strongly correlated with COVID-19 risk. Um, this is CDC data from September 2021 when I was doing the story that shows the risk of uh, hospitalization or death by age groups relative to 18 to 29 year olds, which is the most common um, age of uh, uh, getting COVID. And so at the time, and they kept updating this data too. Um, uh, so this is what the data was when I published the story. At the time, if you're like 50 to 64 years old, uh, you're four times more likely to get hospitalized and 30 times more likely to die. And if you're 65 to 74, you're like 90 times more likely to die and it just gets deeper from there. CDC just stopped updating this a few months ago and the page actually doesn't even load anymore, but you can still find uh, the historical data on the archive network. So this is just a script that loops through all the patients and places them into age groups. And I added a less than zero and more than 100 age group, because some people lied about their birthday, but most people did not. Um, and basically it just loops through each, each patient it calculates their age, it based on their age, it increments the correct age group, and when the loop is done, um, the age group dictionary has all the data and it writes this to a CLC. And so here's the results from that combined with the CDC data, and it's pretty terrifying. Um, most of the patients were between, what are the 50 to 64 range, 31,000 people, and that's like the 25 times more likely to die, but and another 11,000 people were 65 times more likely to die. Um, 702 were younger than zero. So 44% of America's frontline doctors' patients were 50 to 64, making them 25 times more likely to die than uh, uh, like 18 to um, 18 to 29 year olds. And another 16% were between 65 and 74, making them 65 times more. So in uh, just two months, America's frontline doctors can, uh, convinced nearly 45,000 people older than 50 to reject science, to not get vaccinated, and to instead buy over overpriced, ineffective drugs on the internet during the pandemic. So that brings me back to this slide for Jeremy Parker from Sparks, Nevada. Jeremy Parker died on February 3rd, 2022 and he left behind his uh, disabled wife and three kids who were eight years old, 14 year old, years old, and 17 zero years old. And according to a lawsuit filed by his family against American frontline doctors, an autopsy concluded that he died from, he died from taking hydroxychloroquine, which is uh, deadly if you have certain heart conditions, and they're basically saying that he was not examined, they didn't know he had heart conditions, I don't think he knew he had heart conditions, but he took it and he uh, died. And the lawsuit blames its death on the negligence of Dr. Culver, who was the America's Frontline Doctors doctor, and by falsehood spread by America's Frontline Doctors. Um, so here's the consultation notes from when he actually had this consultation. Oh, and I, I just like, yesterday was like on a phone with a lawyer to make sure it's okay to publish this. I'm planning on, on, on writing an article about this soon. I haven't, haven't had time to put it up yet. Um, so the lawsuit says that uh, on or about August 26, 2021, Mr. Parker had a telemedicine visit, but it was actually August 27 at 4.02 in 50 seconds. Um, 
And it also says that he spoke with Dr. Colbert. He was prescribed hydroxychloroquine. Uh, his prescription was filled by RAP2. And um, uh, the lawsuit says that Dr. Colbert never gave Parker a physical examination. And uh, this, these patient notes uh, corroborate that. And uh, yeah, I just learned about this last week while I was working on these slides. So, um, yeah. So, okay, so I had all this data. Uh, but, you know, as you know, you can't trust everything on the internet. And that includes hack data sets that anonymous people send you. So, um, I showed you how, how I analyzed it all, but I also want to show you a bit how I verified that it was authentic. In February 2021, someone hacked Gab, for a social network, and the Gab data set included 38,000 email addresses of Gab users. And since Gab is really popular with anti-vaxxers and election deniers, I thought that there was a good chance that there would be some overlap between Gab users and America's frontline doctors' patients. And so I made a list of all the email addresses of both groups and compared them, and I found several matches. And so I started looking through the public Gab profiles of all of these uh, matches to see if I could find anyone talking about America's frontline doctors. And so here's an example of one of the ones that I found. So this patient created their Cadence Health, health account on July 26, 2021. Um, they had their consultation four days later on July 30th. September 4th, like a little over a month later, they started posting on Gab about trying to find like livestock grade ivermectin. And uh, then, and you know, they're having a discussion about it. And then on September 7th, they said frontline doctors finally came through with hydroxychloroquine and psych delivery. So this is an example of like one of the Gab users that uh, was also an American frontline doctor's patient posting about it publicly on Gab. And so this, like, like this had a few other examples increased my confidence that this was real by by a lot. So some of the aftermath. The day before we published, I spoke with Roque Espinal, the CEO of Jadon's Health on the phone. He told, he claimed that he had no idea what the service was used for, and that, uh, like that day when I called him, I also called um, other people involved, uh, he was invited to an emergency Zoom meeting with America's frontline doctors and speaking to an MD, and he said that there were 16 different attorneys there. Uh, and he told them that he, well, he told me that he said he was ending his contract with them immediately, and then he just like hung up and shut down the service. And then that day, the whole speak with an MD service went offline and was offline for a week, it took one week to get it back online, saving an estimated $700,000 on fake consultations that week. Um, but then when it came back, it was actually still running the exact same. Uh, software on a different domain, and I don't really know what's going on with that. If they were firing it, and uh, I don't know, there, there, there's more, there's more to this that I don't quite fully understand. Um, but also the day before publishing, I talked to Elvis Patel, the CEO of Rapku, and he didn't believe me that it was hacked at first. So I emailed him the screenshot of the super admin interface, and then he started to panic, and uh, he demanded to know the identity of my source so he could tell the FBI. Um, and of, of, of course, I you didn't know to tell anyone the identity of your sources, and I also didn't know the identity of my source, which helps. Um, then he hung up and he's like, I, I need to call the CTO, I don't have none. Um, but it's also worth noting that by the time we published this story, uh, Rav was already stopped working with American Frontline Doctors, and he said that the reason was because they were just getting so many orders that there was just no way they could fill them all. And I confirmed that that was true by reading the um, America's Frontline Doctors Telegram groups, where a lot of people were complaining about what So with Congress investigating America's Frontline Doctors, the group decided to leave the state oil business. They stopped uh, selling fake medicine, um, but uh, Simone Gold was not done with this at all. She launched a whole separate company uh, that was not under investigation by Congress called uh, Gold Care. And this one is basically um, uh, a new company with monthly membership fees and it's designed to completely replace evidence-based healthcare. Basically, it's an alternative to health insurance. Uh, and I just checked, it costs $99 a month right now. And since it's like a membership-only scam, it's a lot harder, uh, like as opposed to selling directly to the public, it's a lot harder for journalists to investigate. 
this. We have to like date every single member and then you have access to everything. Um, and uh, yeah, so another uh, thing is that we'll also know Dole was serving for prison sentence uh, for serving the Capitol on January 6th. Other people, uh, America's frontline doctors, tried to conduct a coup of their own. A lawyer named Joey Gilbert, who, who uh, worked with America's frontline doctors, conducted an audit of how Simone Gold had been spending the group's money, and then he sued her, trying to take over the organization. Um, so in addition to all the money that they scammed from patients, uh, they had received at least $10 million in donations from supporters. And um, uh, while more than a million Americans were dying from COVID during the pandemic, this is how some of gold was spending in very small doctor's money, according to this lawsuit. She lived rent-free in a $3.6 million mansion in Naples, Florida, purchased with the very small doctor's charity funds. Uh, she spent $12,000 a month on a bodyguard, $5,600 a month on a housekeeper. She had $50,000 a month on credit card expenses. She purchased three cars, including a Mercedes Benz, and took private jet flights, including a single trip that cost $100,000. Uh, but then, just like in January 6th, this too failed to, when she got out of prison, she managed to regain control of the organization. There was apparently a lot of drama where, like, like, I don't know, people were like locked out of their email, like she controlled the mailing list, but other people controlled other things. Um, yeah, but she, she seems to be firmly in control again. Uh, and so, unfortunately, you know, things actually haven't really gotten better at all. Um, when Republicans took the House in 2022, the coronavirus committee shut down, and with it, the investigation into uh, American frontline doctors and state of the state itself ended without really coming to anything. Uh, Washington Post analyzed disciplinary records from all 50 states' uh, medical boards, and they found that very few doctors who threatened patients' lives by pushing pandemic disinformation face any consequences at all. Nearly all of them are still practicing medicine. Florida has passed a law making it illegal for medical boards to punish doctors who spread COVID misinformation, and Missouri, North Dakota, and Tennessee have also passed laws. Uh, protecting doctors from being disciplined for prescribing everything. So on that happy note, I want to bring you back to my book, um, Acts, Leaks, and Revelations. So this investigation into America's frontline doctors is kind of what inspired me to start writing this book so that I could teach researchers and journalists and other people how to do this type of investigation that involves lots of data like this, which is you kind of have to be a programmer and have to understand this stuff to even touch this at all when you just start out with two, two files of compressed data. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I focus so much on like writing Python code, working with CSV files, working with JSON data. Uh, we are all drowning in data, well, not all of us, the internet is drowning in data sets. There's like new, huge hacks and leaks and, and data sets that get dumped on the internet in various places constantly, every day. And, you know, like 95% of them I just don't even look at because I don't, I'm way too busy. And then the ones that I do download, I just generally don't have time to, to spend any time on any of them. Barely anyone knows how to do any. So this is basically what I'm hoping to do with writing this book is to make a lot more people that have this skill set to be able to dig through books like this, and or to dig through data sets like this. Um, I also want to plug Distributed Denial of Secrets, which is a transparency collective. I'm an advisor to them. And they're basically like a public library of leaks. You can go uh, to their website, see what has been leaked in the last few days, and if it interests you, you can go ahead and download those leaks. A lot of their data is um, limited distribution, which means that it's not available to the public, and they normally do this if it uh, has a lot of uh, PII. So like the GAB data set is not available for everyone. Um, and also there's like a, a really interesting Oath Keepers data set that showed how many most keepers, uh, you know, are like active in law enforcement and stuff. Um, and there's like lots of data sets like this that have like tons of private information, but if you want access to it, you just contact them. Um, and as long as you're basically like planning on researching it and publishing your findings, you can get access. Um, so, yeah, and uh, uh, you can see some information about this book at the no search table in the vendor area, but it's all, all sold out. Um, but you can also go to accentmates.com to see more information. So that is it. And I don't know how much time we have left, but 
Anyone have any questions?